Esquire columnist John Barron went to Savannah, Georgia for a weekend, and he became so captivated by the city's character that he moved there. He found murder, sex, and madness amidst the magnolias, and he wrote what the New York Times called the first true crime book that makes the reader want to call a travel agent and book a bed and breakfast for an extended weekend. It is called Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. It is climbing the bestseller list, and it is getting rave reviews, and we're pleased to have the author here this evening. Welcome. Nice to be here. Tell me the story, because it, it, you, uh, who have been a journalist with New York Magazine, columnist with Esquire, uh, all of a sudden, this is, I guess, many journalists' dream, is to write uh, this kind of book and get this kind of reception. And it's almost as if it didn't start by design. You didn't go to Savannah looking for a story. No, and I wasn't there to write a book. Right. I, I stumbled on it. The, the airfares tumbled in the beginning of the, of the 1980s, and it made more sense uh, to take flights out of town for a long weekend than to buy this fancy food that you get in Nouvelle Cuisine and restaurants. So yeah. that's what a bunch of us did every once in a while. One of the, one of the trips I made was to Charleston, and I, uh, my friends went back on Sunday, but I noticed on the map that Savannah was only two hours south by car. I'd always heard about Savannah. I'd never seen it. Um, I'd read uh, Treasure Island when I was 10 years old, and the map of Treasure Island is handed over, if you recall, at Savannah. Captain Flint gives it to Billy Bones at Savannah, and I always thought of Savannah as a pirate's rendezvous, right. because it's also written on the map that Robert Louis Stevenson drew for all those editions of the book. Later, when I read Gone with the Wind, it was not the center of the action, but it was off on the coast, and, and Margaret Mitchell describes it as, uh, as a, an ancient grandmother f uh, fanning herself in the shade. <laughs> This is Savannah as opposed to Atlanta, which was yeah. then a, a frontier town. Yeah. So that's all I knew about Savannah. And I don't think many people do know a lot about Savannah. So I took a look and I drove there and uh, I was absolutely captivated, enchanted, and seduced by the city. The city what, what was it about the city that captivated, well, fascinated, seduced? <clears throat> the physical environment, for one thing. It's a city of garden squares. The streets are laid out in a grid pattern with squares at every other intersection. And each one has Spanish moss and live oak trees and sh flowering shrubs. Uh, the town is very well preserved. It's a 19th century town uh, with beautiful architecture. The weather, as you probably know, is very mild and soft and gentle. And the light is gentle because it filters through the, the live oak trees, which have very tiny leaves, and it filters rather than it yeah. blocks. The shade is not dark. It's, li it's sort of soft. And there's an atmosphere. There's a hush in town. There's, there's very little noise at all, very little happening. And so there's this, this, this sort of hothouse atmosphere. And it, the people are charming. And I discovered, as the longer I was there, I discovered more and more interesting yeah. people and characters. And so what did you do, though, after discovering the city and finding out you liked it? Yes. You did what? I went back to New York. Yeah. And then I thought about it. And it, it came time in my career to do something a little more than, than uh, magazine uh, writing, I, because I found it rather superficial. I was doing columns for Esquire. And I would study something for about a week or two and write about it, and then something else, and something else, and articles were. For me, no, I didn't get deeply into anything. And I, began to think I wanted to write a book, and I thought, well, perhaps Savannah is, the pl is, is, is meat enough for a book, because it was this wonderful, self-contained society. They don't care about the other outside world. And I went back, and the book happened. It sort of came together. It didn't come together. Went I back to live. Together. Went back I went to back live, to live and it took about seven years to write the book. Yeah. And you got to know the place, and you got yes. to know the people. Right. And so what does, what, how did Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil come about? Uh, How did you, who did you know, and what did you know, and, and what began led to, meet to this people. I, I knew that story of murder and seduction a, a murder, and sex? Yeah. And uh, I knew there was a story there, and uh, a certain murder that happened in the most beautiful house in Savannah. Very intriguing kind of murder. The man who was accused of murder openly admitted that he shot this young man in his house, but whether it was self-defense or murder was the big question. But the man who uh, was the defendant, Jim Williams, lived in... Mercer House, a house built by the songwriter Johnny Mercer's great-grandfather during the Civil War. It's the most beautiful house in Savannah, still, uh, on, uh, still in private hands. And Jim Williams, every Christmas, had the, the party of the year that all the society, members of society, uh, hoped to be invited to. So he was a sort of center, central figure in society. So for him to shoot somebody in a house that had already been photographed and, and published in Architectural Digest and, and was a center of the social life, uh, was kind of a shock, and I, I realized that I could do a portrait of Savannah as seen through this murder and how the town reacted to it. It causes some critics to say this is really two books in one. Yes. On the one hand, it's almost a travelogue. Right. It is a setting of a city, a romantic city in time and place, and on the other hand, it is a story of a murder. Right. 
It's, it's, it's many things. In fact, it's one of the big challenges for Random House was that it was, it's n not, not any one genre. It's not a novel, but I've written it in the form of a novel. Right. It's not a travel travelogue where there's plenty of travel. But there's writing an enormous in it. sense of eye for detail in yes. this city. And there's a sense of place. Yeah. It's not strictly a true crime book, but there's a true crime reported in it. Yeah. It's 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 not a memoir, but it is a memoir. So what is it? It's all these things. It's what I felt like writing and pulling together. And my only intention was to be entertaining from beginning to end. And uh, tell in the me form it, it sort yeah. of came about on its own. Tell me about the characters. Well, I, I'll like tell the you, dead man. Uh, well, the uh, the dead man. There are several. Uh, the, the the man who got shot right, right. was a redneck uh, hustler, right, male called, hustler, male hustler, right. uh, Danny Hansford. Uh, the man who shot him, uh, Jim Williams, was a fascinating character. Um, he now is dead too. He died of natural causes, but he was um, he uh, made his own fortune. He was an antique dealer and a great wit. Marvelous, strange person, slightly evil looking, but marvelous. There is, in the book also, there is a man who walks an invisible dog. Mm -hmm. There is a man who has a bo bottle of poison strong enough to kill everybody in Savannah if he dumps it into the water supply. And for fun, he glues threads to the backs of flies and walks them. As one would walk a dog, he walks flies. <laughs> there is a black drag queen named the Lady Chablis, who's one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life, yeah. a true comedian. Um, a voodoo priestess who uh, goes to the graveyard to put a hex on the district attorney for uh, Jim Williams. He hires her to do this, and I accompanied them one time into a graveyard when this went on. Yeah, you and had total access to the people that, to, to help you tell your story? Yes, I did. <clears throat> How did and you develop that confidence? Well, I'll tell you something. People know that Savannah is a closed society, right. but they're open to... Uh, Strangers, they are. I mean, not. I, if I had wanted to be a member of the Oglethorpe Club, that I could forget it. But uh, <laughs> no way. As a, the exactly. <laughs> as a guest in town, they're most hospitable. Yeah. And as you and know, you could be taken to the Oglethorpe Club. That's right, and I was. But I, being a member, no. But uh, they're most hospitable. And the one thing Southerners love to do is talk. Right. And I said I was writing a book. I would call someone up out of the blue. I said, I've heard about you from so-and-so. I'm writing a book about Savannah. Yeah. I was always very open yeah. about it. These are stories beyond the murder itself. Yes. The yes. characters yes. that you're going to put in the... Yes, it's a real panoramic yeah. view, but it all sort of ties in. And what, if I said I was writing a book and I wanted to meet them, and the response yeah. almost invariably was, well, come for cocktails. Make it at 4 o'clock. We can get started yeah. early, start drinking early, start talking Now, are you early. taking notes all the time? Yes. Are you, I mean, are, yes. And, and does that inhibit them at all? Or no, do... because when we get to the really choice spots, I put the notebook down yeah. and pretend I'm not taking it in. When somebody's really confessing something, you don't scribble. Madly, you, you calmly listen and then later write it down while they're not watching. But I always had my pen and pad out so that I was never, I was never trying to put one over on the subject. Now, do you writing. feel lucky that all this was just, I mean, let's assume, let's, let's give you credit for the gifts you have as a writer. Do you feel lucky that this story just fell there? I mean, this story that provides the meat of this, you, your powers of observation to see and sense and feel and be able to, to, to write about the characters, to observe the power of observation, but the story itself. I was very lucky, but yeah. really, uh, this is the, the main character of this book is Savannah. And my luck was in discovering Savannah, which has been described as the biggest, uh, the, the biggest secret in America, yeah. best kept secret in America. Uh, so I was lucky to find Savannah. Why is it the best kept secret in America? Why not has it been people discovered? Because everybody knows about Charleston, I guess. That's but. right. It, and it hasn't uh, really tried to sell itself. It's sort of, you know. Um, when uh, Minotti wanted to move, uh, uh, have a Spoleto festival in the United right. States, he went first to Savannah. Yeah. They were totally Jim uninterested. Giancarlo Minotti, right? Right. They were totally uninterested. So, as you know, so Charleston, Charleston got right. it. And Prudential was looking for a headquarters. They went to Savannah. Savannah gave them no help at all, no encouragement. And they wound up in Jacksonville. Well, this is why Savannah, Savannah likes things just the way they yeah. are. And that's what they do. But in the end, you moved back. I did. Why? Well, I was really there to write a book. Yeah. I really moved. You, you, you never had any sense of staying, although no. you feel some longing to go back. And I do go back. And, and I love going back now because the book is out. And, and I must say, the reaction of the people in Savannah has been very interesting. At first, they were bemused by the fact that I was writing a book. Yeah. After three or four years, they didn't believe I was writing a book. January of 93, when they heard the book was going to be published by Random House, everybody panicked. What have yeah. I told him? Is it going yeah, to be in the right. book? Is, it's about a murder. It's about strange people. How will we look? Will anyone want to come here? And the book came out. And they see that it's a very sympathetic, if very quirky, portrait yeah. of Savannah, but very sympathetic. Nobody's angry or nobody's really... One or two or three people. Feeling of what? That, that, that the way you described them is not them? No. 
Uh, you the, took liberties I, with there's their a character, indiscretions? No, there's a character or two who come off not so well. Yeah. But it's a fair portrayal, and they're not too happy. Uh, and I can understand that, but they are in the uh, small minority, as it turns out. Some people are a little shocked about the drag queen and yeah. things like that, but I think by one, and large... One of your favorite characters. My, one of my favorite characters certainly yeah. is is Chablis, who's yeah. the black drag queen. But uh, I, I really fell in love with the city and all the characters, even ones I didn't admire yeah. all that much. Now, have, have people who've read the book in terms of editors and your friends who have seen the early manuscripts since it recently been published, anxious to go to Charleston and meet some of these people and say, please take me and I want to meet yes, Chablis? Uh, it's an amazing... Well, I've heard from the Chamber of Commerce that uh, they've never had so many tourists <laughs> in Savannah as they do now. In fact, this girl on the cover... Yeah, I'll hold it up, yeah. Is a, that's a statue in Bonaventure Cemetery where yeah, three, of the, to tell me about the three of the chapters Cemetery. take place in right. Bonaventure Cemetery. And a local photographer in Savannah took this picture for Random House, and I think it's a beautiful cover. But anyway, yeah. she, uh, now she's the subject of all these tour buses go, and they pull up, and they've been posing, and then the family that owns the plot that this statue is in has removed it as of Friday. Yeah. And uh, now it, it's gone. So, because they don't want all that. It's very Savannah for them to have done that. Yeah. Not a word, just they removed it. Now, is Savannah, the, the whole case, because it's, it, because it's homosexuality and so all, all these other things, does it, I mean, is, how do Sanders Savannans feel about that? They take that. They're pretty sophisticated people, and they take that in stride. After all, don't forget that Jim Williams, who was this social right. figure, right. was known to be a homosexual, right. and he was not flamboyant particularly, but they knew it, and they sort of pride, they told me later that we prided ourselves on accepting a gay man as uh, a social figure. As an important figure in our yes. community. And how about Danny Hansford? Well, he wasn't known to anybody. This was a, yeah. a very, um, this was a friend and, and, a, and a helper uh, that Jim Williams employed from time to time. And I don't think Jim Williams took him around socially, but he was uh, there at the, at the house on occasion. And, uh, but he certainly wasn't uh, part of Jim Williams' open social life. Yeah. He kept, he was discreet, let us put it that Is way. Is there anything that you wanted to do you couldn't do? No. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't get some characters in, but there wasn't room for more than I put in. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't add some things, but I, I'm really basically pleased with it. It took me seven years, and I kept fixing and changing and rewriting, so that I'm, I'm fairly content with and the way it And how does it feel to have written a book Wonderful. like this? I mean, I mean, after seven years, and to see it received this way? Well, it's, the, it's every writer's dream. Yeah. And do you, are you beginning to develop some fear as to whether you can duplicate this, whether you can do this again? Yes, I'm terrified that I can. So I'll have to do something very different the next time. And what about who's going to, I'm, I'm sure the movie people just, have, have you already sold it to the movie people? Yes. Who bought it? Arnold Stiefel has bought it, and uh, he's a um, very lively uh, producer. I know my book is in the right hands because when I talked to him once on the phone, um, I heard splashing noises, and I said, Arnold, are you in the bathtub? He said, of course. <laughs> so, so and, and, and does he have some sense of who the characters might be, who we would like to well, cast? Well, he's in been movie? discussing some. Um, Tommy Lee Jones, perhaps, for uh, Jim Williams. These, these are just uh, names tossed around. Um, Spalding Gray, perhaps, for um, the uh, man who has the poison, the yeah, strange man yeah. with the poison. Yeah, sounds the, good so far. And uh, I don't and know. And who is Lady Chablis? Lady Chablis wants. Well, I did make the producer promise that anyone who was in the book for real could, uh, uh, and they wanted to be in the movie, they'd be screen tested. Chablis wants to be in the movie. <laughs> no she kidding. Said, she said, if no I'm not, kidding. You know, she said, if I'm not in the movie, there won't be a movie. <laughs> <laughs> and you better not come to Savannah again. Right. But they'll all be screen tested if they want to be in the movie. Yeah, and do you have how much? Is that what else did you extract in terms of your deal for the movie? Other Money. than other than I know, Money. other than points and all those kind of uh, things. Nothing really, except that they do want to uh, do justice to the book, which I'm happy about. They yeah. want me to write the script, but I'm not so sure I want to spend yeah. more time writing the script uh, on this book. I've, Spent enough time on it. But, but have, you, I mean, have you made a final decision on that, or you, no, you're just I, I, leaning I'll against it? Treat, I'm leaning against it, but I might very well work on a yeah. treatment and then let them. I don't know. We're not a, sure a, about a couple that. of things about Charleston. One, tell, the, the graveyard. The Savannah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm Savannah, I'm sorry. What makes it interesting to you? Oh, uh, Bonaventure. Well, the, the, the Garden of Good and Evil is, is precisely the, the graveyard. Yeah. The, the voodoo priestess calls it the garden. And uh, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil it comes from her expression about what dead time is. She yeah. said, you know what dead time is? It lasts one hour, half an hour before midnight to half an hour after midnight. Yeah. Half an hour before is for doing good, half an hour after is for doing evil. Yeah. So the Garden of Good and Evil is specifically the cemetery, and in Savannah it's Bonaventure Cemetery. Yeah. Where does the voodoo come from? It, well, 
the low country in, in, in South Carolina and coastal Georgia uh, is full of voodoo. It comes from the West Indies and from Africa to the West Indies, yeah. and then slaves brought it. And it's still pretty much, it's uh, pretty common, practiced usually pretty practiced common. by black people, for black people. Yeah. But Jim Williams, who was white, uh, got into it. Not terribly seriously, but he liked the idea of mind control and people's mind, and people, uh, this, this woman thinking in his behalf and then her mental powers working yeah. in on his uh, case for him. Yeah. He was quite a fascinating man, and she was a wonderful Buddha and, 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 and too. And Lady Chablis went to a, a debutante ball? Well, she crashed a debutante Crashed it, I just want to mean. I was invited, I got myself invited to the black debutante ball. Yeah. And I heard about it, and I went and I asked if I could go, and the people who ran it said, by, by all means, and it's a beautiful thing. And they, um, they danced the minuet, and there's these, these couples the, the dancing the minuet. Yeah. It's a far, very beautiful thing to watch. Well, Chablis, when I told Chablis I was going, this black drag queen, she said, well, take me as your date. And I couldn't have thought of it. That's a horrible idea. I mean, it, it was grotesque. I said, absolutely not. <laughs> yes. So what she did so was... So she said, I'll go anyway. She, went, she crashed. Yeah. And that's, it was a very tense moment for me. But it was very funny, actually, too. And it's in the book. Yeah. You, do you think these characters are lifelong friends for you? Those are, yes. Those are still think, alive. I, oh, I hope and, so. And those that, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, well, except the ones who aren't happy. But the yeah. others, I hope so. Uh, I, I'm out of time. Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, John Marin. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure, and congratulations on Thank the you. success of the book. Thank you for joining us. Thank uh, Secretary of State uh, Christopher Warren. Christopher, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow night from Charlotte, North Carolina. We'll talk basketball, the magic of the Final Four. See you then.